Hi, everybody. So I want to talk to you about spiritual growth today. And I wonder if you have a particular framework or structure that you use to keep returning to for your spiritual evolution. Uh, I always welcome to you know see what your way is. And so if you want to, before you keep watching this video, feel free to pause it. If you'd like to comment below or journal privately, that's fine. Uh, but of course, commenting below, uh, let me see more ideas and how, how other humans are, are approaching spiritual, sort of a, a conscious uh, practice of spiritual development. Um, I've talked in other videos about sort of my, my beliefs about the spiritual world and, and the reality of life with a capital R. And those stories are, you know, can be inspiring. It can help to situate ourselves in the context of life when there are ups and downs. How do we see the bigger picture? And yet, I find it very helpful and necessary to still have a, a structure, um, a plan, essentially, a program to design that I design for myself. Of course, I borrow it from other traditions, but that I have to customize so that it's really meaningful for me and I, that I can keep returning to it to develop um, consciously my engagement with life in a way that grows my spiritual muscles, you might say, it grows my capacity to hold life and to work my way through life um, in as quote unquote spiritual a way as possible. And I, I'll just say that I, I think spirituality, spiritual, true spiritual growth is, is deeply tied to character growth. Um, I don't think spirituality is about the ability to manifest money or manifest, you know, blessings in life. Like I, I find a lot of modern spirituality is so tied to, you know, trying to make the material life better. And well, the analogy to that is the prosperity gospel, right? Um, which if you don't know about that, you can Google it. Prosperity gospel is basically taking the Bible and saying God, God wants to you know bless you with many earthly goods, and if you are on God's right path, then you would be blessed with riches and abundance of all the pleasures of life and all that. And I, based on my understanding of the spiritual world and and again my my spiritual story, I don't think that's true. I think I think some of us signed up here for quite a hard life. I think some of us consciously signed up for quite a hard life because it has profound positive impact on the soul and the soul is eternal and this life is but a blip in the existence of the soul. It's like one grain of sand and all the sands in the world might represent the eternity of our life and this, this one life is like one grain, it's just a moment. So it's like if we're playing a game, we don't mind playing a really hard level to try to up-level our avatar, up-level our, our hero, because we know that playing this really hard level will give us all kinds of capabilities and, and uh, spiritual weapons, you might say, to, to, to play even harder levels and have even more fun. Uh, anyway, so, um, so I don't think spirituality is about manifesting. I mean, there are people who have, you might say, spiritual um, superpower to manifest abundance in their life. But that's kind of like more like psychic power. To me, it's more like psychic power, not deeply, truly spiritual power. I think spiritual power is, our, uh, is, is a, a strong and loving character, a wise, strong and loving character, somebody who has developed the ability. And, and again, uh, sorry, I have one more thing. I also don't think true spirituality is about those who are able to channel, you know, spiritual entities and like have um, conversations with their guardian angels. I think 
I think that's that's like a spiritual muscle or sixth sense that some people have and some people don't. I don't have that. Uh, all my life, I have um, been fascinated by those things. I I love reading mediumship and and um, I love hearing about people who are able to have spiritual feats, you know, like channeling and and you know um, out of body experiences and and psychic vision and all that stuff. But to me, that's um, that's yeah, that's kind of like surfacey spirituality, you might say. I mean, sure, channeling a higher being or whatever a spiritual guide might give you deep wisdom, so called. But is it truly embodied, integrated into your character, or will you collapse at the very next difficulty, <laughs> or get angry easily, or something like that? So. To me, I think, based on my own spiritual story, I think what we're, we're really here for, or at least what I'm really here for, I'll just speak to myself, what I'm really here for is deep, sustainable character growth. In other words, to understand deeply what the values are that I, that I aspire to and to practice embodying those values into my every fiber of my being there's a reason why i believe we have a bot I, I i believe there's a reason why we have a body what's what's this body about you know why do we play this game well because the body makes it really hard to embody deeper values because life throws at us all kinds of challenges and just to be able to, to just just to stay alive just to get up in the morning just to prepare things to eat and clean up after ourselves and deal with taxes and deal with other human you know frail human beings who have lots of emotions and hormones and just like we do that they have to deal with us too and so i believe that true spiritual practice is not so much about psychic ability channeling out of body and you know dream visions and all that kind of showy stuff but it's about when hard things happen to you, do you respond? How much wisdom and love do you respond with that to? When me people are mean to you or when you have to take care of somebody who is really difficult to take care of, how much how much of God do you represent in this in this world? Whatever you believe the divine character is, uh, I imagine that if God were embodied here on planet Earth, God would be a person filled with luminous wisdom and Im immeasurable compassion, humility, courage, joy, diligence, trustworthiness, integrity, and that everyone who encounters this being would be what would, would come away blessed would come away feeling more uplifted about life about themselves about others other human beings uh more more hopeful right more um grateful and so that's my aim in terms of spiritual growth is how do i like I love this quote from, I think it's Nanny and Brinkley, um, one of the famous experiencers of near-death near death experiences. He said, if God couldn't be here today and had to send you, how would you, how would you act? I think I love that. And it's true. I think God couldn't be here today. Well, for some reason, God said, I'm sending you all to represent me represent different facets of me sure but to try to represent me as well as you can to the people around you i'm like wow every time i go into a room I'm like i am representing the character of god here the the deep wisdom humility joy playfulness you know strength um compassion you know and so so that encourages me a lot about what what um, my path in life that it's not about building abundance or sure those things are like side side things that I'm doing you know that's just to stay alive as a human and to 
try to take care of my family and all that. But the real mission to me, for me, is the long-term embodiment of values, the character growth, which means it doesn't matter if my earthly life goes through ups and downs, if my business is great or terrible, if my relationships are great or, or not, if the people I happen to hang out with are pleasant or not, if um, the weather is great or not, if the economy is doing great for everyone or terrible for everyone. It doesn't matter. Ups and downs of life, what still is the foundation is our character and how we respond and um, what becomes natural for us. At first, as a baby, it was natural for us not to talk, not to be able to walk. It was natural for us, well, maybe walking it becomes natural and talking becomes natural over time. I don't know. But it was as a, you know, we, we develop as a human being to become more and more smart and capable and strong, right? Same thing with our spiritual life. We start out as not humble, not grateful, not hopeful, not joyful, not forgiving. <laughs> and hopefully we grow, grow, grow into more joyful, more forgiving, more humble, more wise, more strong through all the ups and downs of life, more a representative of the divine character. So how will I do that? What's my plan and program for that? Well, I call it the spiritual alphabet because I started to gather these values like, oh, I, I, I so cherish gratitude, gratefulness. I so cherish humility. I so cherish diligence. I so cherish the principle of trust and trustworthiness. I so cherish joy. I so cherish forgiveness. I cherish these values. I so cherish strength and um, faith. I cherish these things. I'm like, okay, how do I remember them? <laughs> how do I remember them and, and throughout my life? And how do I keep coming back and revisiting, revisiting them again? And eventually I started writing out these values and I'm like, wow, there's a lot here, and I'm starting to see an alphabet here. It's like there's, there's you know, appreciation, there's blessings, there's compassion, there's diligence, there's um, equanimity, there's faith, da, 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 gratitude, A, B, C, D, F. I'm like, oh, I could use that as a program for myself to keep coming back. There are 26 letters in the English alphabet. English is my main language. So I'll use that. 26 letters. Are there 26 letters? <laughs> 26 letters. That's exactly half a year. Wonderful. So I can go through my spiritual alphabet twice a year. Uh, once a, once a, you know, one letter per week. One week is a really nice revisiting of a, of a particular value every single day, multiple times a day, because I connect my spiritual practice to my frequent energy reboot. Energy reboot is the thing that I do multiple times an hour during my working day, at least and during when I'm hanging out with my wife in the evening or, you know, hanging out with friends or, you know, relaxing. I don't really do my energy reboot, you know, not not really. But during my working day, which is most of my waking hours, I practice the energy reboot because I might as well. I'm working. I might as well come back to my spiritual practice as well. I'm working on my spirituality just as I'm working on my business. And it's great. And then after, after that, then I get to rest. I get to relax and not think about working and staying vigilant and all that stuff for the evening and parts of the weekend and all that. So that's nice. It's kind of like a balance, right? So uh, the spiritual alphabet uh, is one that I've been coming back to again and again over the years. And now I want to make it more of a thing. I want to make it more consistent now. And uh, so you're going to see me on these videos going through my spiritual alphabet throughout the next months, hopefully years. Hopefully I just keep coming back to it again and again to remind myself and maybe it'll provide some value for you as well, some reminders, some inspiration. And I, um, I'm going to come back. The letters of the spiritual alphabet aren't, each of them isn't exactly a different value or a different principle. I, there are certain principles like gratitude and humility and diligence and, and, and things like that that I, that I want to keep returning to more than once, more than twice a year. And so 
there are some letters that are going to be repeating a particular value, but reframed in a different way. And, but it's, it's fun for me anyway, to have a different letter each week that I'm focused on and like thinking about what is my practice with that letter? What is the, the principle of it? Like reflecting deeply on it. And then also to, to notice examples in daily life of how that value is expressed or not expressed. <laughs> so I can learn from both from contrast. I can learn from, from the good and the so-called bad so that I can learn from all of it. So I'll, I'll end, well, a couple things. One is I'm really curious if there are certain values that you, that you cherish, there's certain principles that you cherish that you would be curious if I wanted to speak to that in part of my spiritual alphabet, if I wanted to reflect on that. So feel free, comment below if there are any values, principles, virtues, ideas, that you think could possibly fit in my spiritual alphabet that you would enjoy having me reflect on. So that yeah, you might reflect on yourself too. So feel free, just comment below if you like to with any words, uh, principles, values, virtues that you, you cherish deeply. I, I would be genuinely curious. And I'll end this video by, I was just thinking this morning about the principle of, of growth and like the journey through life. And another analogy I'll, I'll share. It's like, I think, the, I think the mountain climbing analogy is really apt. Um, just we, we, we signed up for this game, this earth game, this spiritual life, this earthly life, hopefully about spiritual growth. And it's like starting at the bottom and climbing a very, very tall mountain. And I, I'm not a mountain climber, but of course I have climbed hills. And there are some hills I've climbed that are very steep. And it's like climbing a very, very steep hill where you crawl up or you like walk up with much effort. Every single step brings you higher up. And yet a misstep, right? A missed step or lack of vigilance can tumble you down that hill quite a lot. And I think like, I feel like that's, that's this life in terms of spiritual growth as well. I mean, in terms of growth of all kinds of things, growth of businesses, growth of relationships, growth of societies, it's like we're crawling our way t to advancement bit by bit by bit with a lot of diligence. It takes a lot of diligence, planning, faith, perseverance, collaboration, hope, strength, right? And it builds our strength, it builds our collaboration, it builds our hope as we take step by step. And yet, if we're not vigilant, if we don't keep returning to the practice, we can tumble in a relationship, in a business, in a society, quite a lot. And we have to build our way back again. And the building our way back will b b give us additional strength, additional wisdom, sure. And that's how I see this. That's why I'm, I want to keep coming back to this spiritual alphabet. And thank you for <laughs> for watching this, joining me on the journey. I look forward to seeing if you want to add any comments below. Thanks so much.